Hey, hey, y'all. We are here, episode 91, and I am super excited for this episode. Me too. <laughs> I got a really good friend of ours here. Do y'all know what a whale is? <laughs> y'all, you know anybody whale anybody is? know what a whale is? <laughs> Look it up. He's a whale, all right? <laughs> Mr. Alvin Hope Johnson is in the building. Multi-family monopoly. I can go on and on and on, but you got to hear your story. But let me just say this. Thank you very, very much for being here. Well, Corey and Rosemary, thank, <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all for having me, man. It's such a great place to be where people are celebrating you and not tolerating you. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank we you for are, the warm welcome. Yes, we are excited to have you here. So, Alvin, when I, I remember Corey um, first telling me, I think that y'all went to Johnny had Johnny Collins. This is another Johnny Collins connect. <laughs> you know, the power yeah. networking. Episode 81, if you haven't seen it. But Johnny Collins had an event, and I want to say it was like at his mom's church. It was. Um, in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. And he came back so moved because you shared your story. That's uh, where we met. That's where we met. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was shook. I was like, oh my God. Well, the yeah. first part of that wasn't really that great. If you <laughs> right? But I mean, it was just, I was just intrigued, man. I couldn't believe it. So to see the growth, man, and, to, and for us to really be friends, man, I'm just excited. Yes, yes. But, so oh, we're wow. That <laughs> is, yeah, that is interesting. That's something else. So we're going to give you an opportunity to share that story and a little bit about you. But first, I want to play a quick game with you. Okay. And it's going to be this or that. So I'm going to name two things and you choose what would be your this or that. And Corey, you can jump in here too. Okay. Okay. So this or that. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. What about you, Corey? Tacos for me. Tacos. I'm pizza, Alvin. <laughs> Give me like, yeah. do you like 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 regular ghetto pizza or gourmet pizza? Today, I like gourmet pizza <laughs> with no meat, but I really love the meat lovers and pepperoni lovers. And no, you know, not a lot of cheese, but a whole lot of pepperoni. A whole okay. lot of pepper. Are you yeah. not eating meat right now? No, not at all. Oh, um, wow. Are you vegan? Fruitarian. Okay. What does that mean? Just all fruit right now. Oh, oh fruitarian. Yeah. Oh, look, okay. you be learning. Look, I'm a flexitarian. <laughs> What's that? It flex, whatever I feel like. <laughs> 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 That's true. So, food is there. <laughs> Whatever I see, I eat. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So Vegas or Miami? Oh, <laughs> Vegas. 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 Okay, Vegas yeah. for me too. Okay, real books or audio books? Ooh, real books. If I really want to get in. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cause yeah. I can highlight it. Yeah. What about you? Same here, but I, I'm gonna go with audio because I'm always on the move. Yeah. 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 For yeah. me, I'm gonna say audio too for the convenience yeah. of it. I so do more audio. Yeah. yeah. But when I really want to get in, I do yeah, both. You need yeah, to. I yeah. do both, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. I do. I like to. I like to have the audio read it to me a little faster. Yep. While I highlight it. Yep. 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 Okay, and then this one. I mean, your shirt gonna give it away. Single family investments or multifamily. Multifamily. <laughs> <laughs> who, who knew he was going to say that? Yeah. Who knew? Who so knew? that is a great segue into, let's talk a little bit about yourself. And I want to get into multifamily. You know, this, okay. I'm, this is going to be a selfish episode, y'all. I'm yeah. sorry. Corey yeah. said it. He was like, when we have Alvin, it's pretty much for me. Yes, and I'm yeah. like, no, we have to. His story is so amazing and the viewers need to know it. So who is Alvin Hope Johnson? Well, let's see. Today, that is way different than even when I met you guys, but today. Um, man, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a friend, a brother. Uh, I'm a real, real friend. I'm a real dude. That's who I am. Yeah, I would agree. Um, what do I do professionally? I do real estate professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, I develop people professionally. That's mm -hmm. really what I do. Mm -hmm. um, develop ideas. I incubate ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I solve rich people problems, give mm. them a place where they can invest their money in multifamily assets. Um, but I really like to put things together and, I, and I'm a relationship builder. Yeah. So that's why. So have you always been like that? Like, let, like let's go back to the beginning, um, mm -hmm. like straight out of, well, where are you from? Beaumont, Beaumont Texas. Texas. Beaumont, Texas. Yeah, BMT, mm -hmm. Big Money, Texas. <laughs> Uh, highest crime rate in the city. <laughs> Other than Chicago, so y'all don't be laughing. Nah. Uh, Beaumont, Texas, man, right out of high school, 
Uh, no, I didn't always think like that. I thought that, well, see, my, my story is interesting. I just found out a lot about why I have been the way I have been. Hmm. And, um, you know, I never wanted to be seen, never wanted to be heard, never wanted to be on paper, never wanted. I didn't even want to exist. I just wanted to exist. Hmm. Hmm. And, um, you know, that came from an early traumatic experience in my life that I didn't even remember until I was like 38. Oh, wow. So I lived for like 40 something years in fear. <laughs> not wanting to be in front of cameras. Mm-hmm. Just not wanting to be heard, man. Just wanting to be the guy behind the scenes. And uh, today, I'm a little different. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a lot yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, you, you're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so really, that is a testament not to the story of the real estate or any of that. It's really a testament to growth of of a, of a broken man trying to be better. Wow. Wow. Um, really good friend of mine would tell me it didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Mm-hmm. Another good friend of mine would say uh, that as we get better, it gets better. Mm, we know, <laughs> I that, think I we know, know that friend. That yeah, I think <laughs> that, that friend guy. was on a podcast <laughs> so, last uh, week. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> putting all of that together, man, I'm sitting here at 58 years old, looking back at my career, looking back at my life, uh, looking back at the relationships that I have, that I have, that I still have, that I fostered, that that I continue to make. And uh, there have been some some missteps, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe some some regrets. Maybe we're not focused on the on the on the regret side of life. We're focused on the growth side of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so focusing on that allows me to uh, to get beyond those fears. Man, I just did a TED talk about a month ago, and it I got an email on my way here that it got published today. Oh, oh my wow. wow. We and, will put uh, that in show notes. And so that's gonna be uh the thing that grown men don't talk about. Mm. Mm. And so the thing that men don't usually talk about are the traumas associated with sexual assault that we've been going growing through, mm. or that I grew through. Every man didn't go through that. And because of that, that is what stifled me. Mm-hmm. Made me want to disappear, not be heard, all of those things. So living in fear, man, that that not only did that hurt me, it stifled my marriages, <laughs> my relationships, my business relationships. It even stifled my employees from growing. I didn't allow them to grow to be all they could be because I wasn't being who all I could be. Yeah. Wow. And so now as I peel the onion back and continue to grow, it's like, man, who is this dude? I wake up today and go, this is unfamiliar. Yeah. <laughs> right. Literally, like, I've never been here because yeah. I hadn't been this guy before. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm embracing this walk every day. Yeah. So I think what I hear you saying, um, and I love that, you know, just really peeling back the onion. And and as a black woman, listening to a black man say that, right? And I know that my husband has recently um, just re-engaged with a coach and therapy and things like that. Because not just saying, this is just how I am. Mm-hmm. But A, figuring out, like, why are these <laughs> actions this way? And who is it affecting? Yeah. And who is it affecting if I don't do anything about it? So what has that process looked like for you Ooh, to do something wait. about it? Man, uh, <laughs> the therapy, mm-hmm. the three, four hour therapy sessions and you leave out of there like, man, I just got hit by a truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A couple of those a week for yeah. months to be able to even just tell my story. Mm-hmm. And now to be here, um, we went at work, since this is about real estate, we went from an office or a staff of about 200 people I've got five people on my team now. Mm. Mm. We outsource 90% of what we do. And so now we're tr- we'll get into a place where we only operate in what I like to do. Mm. Oh, I love that. Because if I do what I like to do, then I'm going to be super good at it. And then I put people around us on our team that do what they like to do. And yeah. we hire or outsource everything else. Yeah. yeah, It gives us the ability to work from anywhere we want to work from. It gives us the ability to carry as much as I want to carry because I love doing this. Yeah. Yeah. But it also allows me to get rid of stuff that I don't want to do. Uh, relationships that I didn't want to have. Why am I worrying about being 
worrying about the maintenance guy's position over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's somebody else that loves to manage maintenance guys. Right. Mm-hmm. Why right. am I doing that? So it has caused me to shrink back to be able to go forward. You know, we want to fly and we keep putting a whole bunch of stuff on the airplane. No, I'm kicking my way jump down. off the airplane, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's, it's getting it's rid some... of assets today that looking at long term. Oh, man, if I put, got this deal, got $5 million in this land deal. Uh, I could work really hard for the next three years and make fifteen million. Mm. I could sell it today and make four. Yeah, right. I think I'm gonna take the four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm putting stuff off the airplane. Yeah. yeah. To to fly higher. Yeah. And I think I'll be able to have more impact. So I'm I'm still growing through this. So I don't know. You might talk to me next month, and I'll be totally different. <laughs> But it'll be it'll be more in tune with what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I know that this growth is just going to continue to bring me to my ultimate self. So a couple of things I heard. Um, I heard delegation mm-hmm. taking a lot of, and I'm only speaking about this because a couple of episodes ago I went through burnout. I talked about it. I went through yeah. burnout back in the summer, man. I just as much as I love real estate, I just got tired of doing it. I got tired of the people. I got tired of the deals. I got yep. you know it was just too much. Yep. Um, but I hear you putting a lot of people in place, the, the Who Not House we just talked about. Uh, but I also hear you speaking freely on doing what you like to do. Mm-hmm. Because I think in our business, sometimes we can get caught up in everybody else's job. And that's not really what we're here for. Right. Right. We're here right. To, to make money and make a good living and, and do the good deals. But we're not trying to stroke out behind it. Right. right. Have all of this weight and stress behind it. So I think that's that's where you are right now. Right. Man, I'm, I'm, we're seeing the market change. Yeah. We're seeing uh, you might have to work a little bit harder to make the same money, the same amount of yep. money. Yep. yep. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Yes. Mm. Different stages of our life, we we value different things. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably a generation ahead of you guys. Mm-hmm. Um. And at this stage, I'm looking at the next 15 years as my golden years to set up whatever I want to set up for whoever I want to set up. If I want to set up anything, <laughs> right. no, that's right. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to put no pressure on myself to do nothing for nobody because I reserve the right to change my mind. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I reserve the right to change my mind. That's powerful yeah. because how many times... Be- and you're evolving right and what your goals may have looked like and what you thought would fill your cup five years ago it may look different and you're giving yourself permission and how many people like i can think of Corey's grandfather um who owned a meat market at some point I know that at least for grandma, it wasn't filling her cup anymore. Mm -hmm. But since that was the goal, I don't think they gave themselves permission to say, maybe we want to do something different. Mm -hmm. And he died behind that. You know what I'm saying? Like he died behind that butcher knife pretty much. Mm -hmm. And never really, from our perspective, it looks like he never really got to live beyond after achieving that dream. Right. And... Some people may think that sounds selfish, but if I'm operating in what I'm really, really good at Mm -hmm. and what I was designed to do. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be a lot more effective and really have a lot more impact. Right. And so, you know, we, I don't know, we get older and we figure this out and then we die. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully we got some more time to work on it. But we, but now in, in this stage now, maybe, man, just maybe some of the junk I've been through that if I can share it in a way or and articulate it in a way where somebody else can pick it up. Yeah. It might make that journey a little bit easier. Yeah. But, you know, it's freeing for me at this point, too, because it's really freeing for me to be able to tell the junk that happened to me. I wish I'd have been able to tell it 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because what heights would I have reached? Right. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not complaining about my life. I've got a wonderful life and, uh, and I'm a hell of a dude. I just probably, uh, can continue to get better. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I agree. You are a hell of a dude. You just said something though. And I, and I love, I mean, I love the way this episode is going because I think it's freeing for so many men. My man want to get to the money. I want to get to the money. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I do want to ask you this. Like, what about, because this is something that we know. 
is that we all are carrying some junk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all are carrying some trauma. We all mm-hmm. are. But you are courageous enough to acknowledge it. And there's somebody somewhere, like my prayer and my hope is that they're seeing you. And once they Google you and see everything, and you like, yeah, I'm doing what I like to do. They be like, oh, dang. Because he's dealing with his junk. That gives him the freedom to do that. What do you say to that person who is so scared to tap into their brokenness? Mm-hmm. What do you think they'll get on the other side of that courage to tap in? That's a really, really great question. Um, in one of my, my, my sessions, I told my therapist what I was looking to get out of this. And she went, oh, no, 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 I don't know. <laughs> and I went, like why, a business meeting. <laughs> why is that? I mean, you the therapist, you going to guide me through this process. Why are you going, no, no, no? She said, no, it's too intense. And I said, well, you would only know it's intense because you've gone through it. She said, yeah, I haven't. It's really intense. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. I said, well, okay, I hear you from this position. Tell me from the position of how you were before you went through it. Mm-hmm. Was it worth it? And she looked at me and go, oh, absolutely. I said, well, sign me up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the other side of that coin of not dealing with it and and acting like nobody don't know what you've been through. Right. Yeah. Cause nigga, we can tell what you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can tell what you've been through because it just didn't take me that far. Right. Yeah. But I can tell what you've been through. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many other seers. So you ain't hiding nothing. Yeah. So go ahead and deal with it. The other side is so free. Yeah. So free. Talking about coming out of the closet. You know, I ain't talking about literally coming out of the mm. closet. But it's coming out of the closet yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, I lived in fear for 47 years, lying to myself that nobody didn't want to see me. <laughs> nobody didn't want to hear me. I was not good enough to talk about mm-hmm. it. I was not good enough to be doing what I was doing. Yeah. So when you let one little thing tell you you're not good enough, that permeates through your whole life. Yeah. yeah. And so it told me even in my marriages that I was not good enough marriages that I was not good enough and then when I felt like I wasn't good enough then you couldn't measure up either yeah so it just tore up so many areas of my life so the other side of dealing with it is freedom yeah and oh man um it feels really good it's interesting to hear to hear you talk about it and I guess my question to you is your tagline is dream on dreamer Yeah. yeah right how does that stay fresh with you going through all of that and now i'm sure you you're coming out of it on, on the other side of it but but mentally like how do how did you keep your mind sharp enough to keep dreaming yeah how does the dreamer keep dreaming yeah. on there has to be something to keep pulling you hmm. there has to be hope yeah yeah uh if you don't have hope you won't even get out of bed yeah so my hope fueled my dreams mm. We are all, believe it or not, want to hear it or not, we're all living a life we designed today. Hmm. Wherever you at, you did it. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. So if you can dream it and hope it and see it, I just believe you'll you'll get pulled to that if that's what you're supposed to be doing. That's amazing. This I'll, is a random question. Is Hope really your middle name or you just put that there? I or put it you? there, but I'm in the process of changing it. Oh, that is, I love that. So yeah. I love that you even embody yeah. the hope. And now that- That's all I had. Yeah, yeah. that's all you had. Yeah. I so, love that. So, so now Al, when anybody talk about you, they have to speak of you and speak hope. Yeah. So forgive me. No. <laughs> I, I got to get to real estate. Let's do it. <clears throat> what are you working on? Because I know it so much. We can talk Princeton. I saw stuff in Wisconsin. I know you all over the place. What like what's your what are your babies right now? Right now, Corey, I am working on. Um, I would tell you 20,000 units is my is my target. OK, I think we can accomplish it in five or six years. OK. Hope, dream. Yeah. If I don't have a target, I'll never hit it. Uh, some people tell me that because it's so big, it waters down the message. Mm. 
I think those people just tell me that because they don't think they can do it. Yeah. Mm. And some of those people are on my team. Mm. Some of those people, I need them today. Yeah. But some of those people that think like that might just work themselves into a position of where all they get to do is what they want to do. Because yeah. all I want people to do is what they want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And if all they want to do is one or two projects a year, that's great. But it allows me to set my business up to where if they're part of the core team that we are designing, we're designing some buildings mm -hmm. that I can use over and over and over again. Mm. So it's kind of like going through Whataburger. You like a double meat with bacon? It's to stack the same every time. Okay. I want 200 unit developments. They'll look the same all over the place. They're all branded the name Dreamville. They're all four stories. They're all elevator served, interior corridors, beautiful buildings. If we hit a situation where we can't do a four-story building because of height restrictions, we'll peel the floor off and we'll use the elevator shaft as staircases and, and other amenities. So we're really designing a building that can be done repetitiously over and over and okay. over again. Okay. So if my core team doesn't want to be a part of that massive growth, we're going to license that project or that product to where I can license it to anybody that wants to build it. Okay. It'll come with all of our vendors and everything that goes with that. Now, as I sit here today, I was introduced to a something just a week ago, reintroduced to a project, senior housing deal, 400 units in, four, four di in three different locations. Um, well, I'll get to that in a minute. You're asking okay. what I'm working on. Yeah. 400 units in Princeton, 250 units in Anna, Texas, 184 units in Kakana, Wisconsin, 103 units in Mansfield, Texas, and about, oh, 200 and something lots in Greenville, Texas. And so those are the projects that are front and center. Uh, then there's some that have that on the back burner. But ultimately, what we're working towards is 20,000 units. And so the 20,000 units would be either, um, on average, 200 unit developments. And it's only 100 of them. Okay. So when I say 20,000 units, like, oh, my God. No, it's only 100 developments. Mm -hmm. And so do I need 25 teams to get four of those developments done out of each team in different parts of the country that has yet to be seen, but it'll be, so we're working through some systems that'll do that. The reason I think that 20,000 unit number is significant is not about the number of units, but it's about the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that once we get a system in place that will continue to reproduce itself, we should be at 20,000 units. Yeah. So five years of system, blah, blah, blah. But now, as I sit here, man, I was telling you, I was introduced to this senior housing deal. And as I have been trying to get better, not trying, as I have been working on getting better, yeah. mm -hmm. um, removing clutter, uh, doing only what I like to do, getting my life down to what I know I'm doing, only what God put me here to be doing mm -hmm. for this season. Yeah. Um, narrowing my focus like yeah. a laser right the, the tighter it gets the, the deeper it'll burn mm -hmm. um i'm trying to even make my units who's my avatar what's my focus what's the market so is it now more towards senior housing because i'm thinking of a system to build these units but i don't want to have a whole portfolio of units in five six seven years that are irrelevant right. to the yeah. market right. yeah because right. nobody right. wants right. it right you have to be forward so, thinking 47% of the population will be over 55 in five years. Mm. This generation where I'm in, 50% of the people don't have a pension fund. Mm. Mm. So we're going to get to a place where uh, senior housing, 55 and over, is it's already a thing. Yeah. But assisted living, independent living, memory care, those are real big things. And the, the dollar amounts that I'm seeing in that market are staggering. So my whole business model may be shifting more towards a senior housing uh, side of the business uh, more than just multifamily. We're just becoming more niched yeah. in what we do. Yeah. And, and what I love that I hear you saying is that because you are, have let go some of the clutter, mm -hmm. right, you're making room for the thing like this is still within what you're doing but it's mm -hmm. niching down yep. and because you aren't cluttered with all this other have to do stuff correct um 
it's making room for these new opportunities and that you're open yeah. that you get to do and you're open to shifting Absolutely. and flowing with that. Well, if, if we say we want a business, we don't want to build a hamburger stand when everybody's going meatless. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, right. We I don't want to have 20,000 units of apartments when people are getting away from apartment living. Yeah. Right. Um, which I doubt that'll happen in five or 10 years. Yeah. But where's the biggest need? Where's the biggest gap I can fill? Right. We get paid by the problems that we solve. And so if I'm solving a common problem that anybody can solve, I'm not going to make that much money. Right. But if I'm solving a niche problem where there's a great need, then I, not only am I going to provide a great service, but I'm going to make a whole lot of money doing it. That, that's amazing. So every entrepreneur that is tuning in, if you didn't listen to that, you get paid by the problems that you solve. Yeah, that's and if you're solving the same problem, and even if you're doing something like for me in my real estate business, what distinct what makes, you problem, different? What makes me different, yeah. right? Yeah. Because anybody can show somebody a house, right. but what am I going to provide in terms of education or service or the experience, the experience yeah. that correct. is going to outshine the competition? The yeah. Which is what led me to development. Yeah. So many people buying apartments, not many black people is what they tell me, mm -hmm. but even the ones that are, there are a lot of us, but how many people are building? How many people are thinking about five years from now? How many people are thinking about 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to, not trying, we're working on becoming a mark, an expert in this field yeah. of the development of high energy, high impact, high efficiency apartments, maybe for the senior housing community. Yeah. But for the for the working class uh, community today. So a couple of things I need to do a brain dump real quick. Um, we talked about the 10 acres that I own in in Denison. Mm -hmm. I was considering it making it a mobile home park. Mm -hmm. Might pivot. We might talk about some senior situations there. Mm -hmm. Second thing is uh, we talk a lot about our surroundings and mentors, coaches. How does somebody like you like I'm sure you do. You don't have to name them. But but how do somebody like at your level find a mentor or a coach first thing i've done is i prayed for that for okay me. i didn't know i needed that Corey, until i was probably in my 40s mm. okay it's mm -hmm. this, this mentor thing yeah mm -hmm. like, so now it, it may sound superficial but if you listen to the heart of the matter you look for people that have what you want. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got a great marriage. If I really wanted to be mentored in marriage, I would sit at y'all's feet. Mm -hmm. You know, our friend Terrell and Anna Knight, they got a great marriage. Yeah. Um, if I want to have a lot of commerce, I look for somebody that's got a lot of commerce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, one of them, openly grants one of my mentors. Yeah. He ain't just buy one helicopter. He bought one for him and one for his wife. Right. I was. I. I, I do have a. I, I have a selfish Grant Cardone question. That you, I always ask you about Grant. Um, not to cut you off there, but I'm glad you mentioned him. Yeah. What. What. What have you learned from Grant? Because I saw um, Hermosi. You know what's his name? Uh, Hermo, him and his wife Hermosi. He's talking about how he paid Grant like a hundred thousand dollars to talk to him for an hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. But but with the, the multiple experience that you've had with Grant, like mm -hmm. what have you learned from him? I remember I went to his event. Okay, I'm gonna cut you off there real quick okay. because if if memory serves me correctly, that might have been like 2019 20. Um, and I told you I don't know where we were, and I told you I was like, oh yeah, I got Corey. We're gonna go to the 10x conference. And me and Court, like, I got us, like, the bad one, get one free, nosebleed seats. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I looked up, like, literally, we're at the top. And I'm like, is that Al down there in the front row? You bought, like, the the best package. You was like, if I'm coming, I'm going to all this stuff. He was at the, the, the private party with the, with, the, with the private jet was in the back. I low-key feel like I think I'm the one who told you about Grant. But you, you kind of, like... Well, you, I you think you told it. me about the event. Darren had told me about <laughs> Grant Cardone. I was like, no, man, don't tell me about nobody buying no freaking apartments. What I'm doing is working. I don't need right. to hear none of that. I mean, he showed me this guy on Instagram, <laughs> and I went, what the? <laughs> this shit I'm doing is not working. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so saying that to say, I was not surprised when I saw you, you know, a couple of At times after like with Grant. So like what what is that experience? And you're talking to somebody that still watches Grant on a weekly basis on YouTube, social media. 
that first experience showed me excellence because mm. mm. I, I always striving to be better, right? Yeah. yeah. So when you walk into an event and you see it done in complete excellence, you got my attention. Yeah. Yes. I walk into a church and go, whoa, this guy got vision because mm-hmm. I'm always looking for somebody that can see beyond where they are. They yeah. know where they're going because that's the kind of leader I need. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I saw that it's okay to dream big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then at that same event, that night at that party, that you got invited to because you because you, you got the VIP. Ten thousand dollars for we, that ticket. Yeah, we didn't go. And but I had ten, never done anything like that. But that was the best investment ever. It was. Yeah. yeah. When he out. told me he spent ten grand for the ticket, we I was said, like, Ooh, "What?" I, spent, I, I clinched that two for five forty five. <laughs> like I was excited that I did that. <laughs> but but that night at that party, <laughs> I saw him and I said, "Grant, are you running for president?" And he was walking through there real fast. I said, "Hey, man, you running for president?" And he stopped, turned around, and looked at me and said, why would you ask me that? Because Trump's campaign manager was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said, and Cardone University, Trump University, I see all these parallels. He said, not yet, it's too soon. And he turned off and walked away. Mm-hmm. And then I saw him the next night, and I got to introduce myself to him and who I was, what I was doing. He said, man, the only reason you don't have what you want, and you're not where you want to be, because nobody knows who you are, or what you doing? Mm. You need to tell more people about it. Mm. So when I left that event, you know, I saw excellence. I saw big thinking. And I saw why am I so quiet? Yeah. yeah. And so mm. and so it's just continued to feed yeah. me. And yeah. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Alvin, this has been <laughs> amazing. 20,000 I mean, units. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, from, from the units, but also like me and my husband different. Like. Yes, no, I, I, love, I caught it all. I'm just saying, he just casually said, "I know, I know, twenty thousand. <laughs> but I love the humanness of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because with all, you didn't lead with that. Yeah, I, I see that what's really success, what success really looks like in your life right now, is breaking down the barriers. Everything that mm. the devil tried to hold you down and mute you with, you're now taking control and yeah. using that. So for you said that what do you do you develop people yeah. Yeah. and it's impossible to develop people if we haven't first become committed to developing ourselves so we Man, you're making you. me emotional mm-hmm. but <laughs> that's real talk you. this is amazing for seeing yeah. yeah definitely from us from us to you yeah. thank you man you and i say it to all of my friends individually y'all mean more to us than you know then you know thank yes. you thank, thank you y'all. thanks for being here let it be here we'll see y'all next time right. dream, on <laughs> dream on dreamer dream on dreamers